Welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. Yes, indeed. This is nutritional pharmacist Jerry Hickey here to discuss vitamin D. Can it improve strength in younger people and can it help you keep mobile when you're older? Can it help prevent you from falling when you're older? So here's a headline. Can vitamin D make you stronger? Well, a study from the University of Birmingham makes that case. Increased levels of vitamin D led to stronger leg strength. Now, it's in a very good journal, PLOS One. PLOS One is a wonderful American journal. So they looked at a form of vitamin D that's known as the active form. I'll explain this in a minute. And a good level of vitamin D, I'm not saying it has to be exceptionally high, a good level of vitamin D in the blood led to stronger leg strength. Now, they're looking at blood levels. They're not just depending on people answering questions about what they eat and do they take vitamin D supplements because your memory can fail you and trick you. When you check blood levels, well, that's proof positive in one way or the other that you are getting your vitamin D or you're not. Now, when you're out in the sun, if you have young, healthy skin, the sun interacts with the cholesterol in your skin and it changes it. And that goes to the liver, and it's changed a little bit more into a storage form of vitamin D. Then it goes to the kidneys, and it goes through the final lapse of being changed, and now it's converted into the active form. What they looked at in this particular study was the active form, and they found, hey, good levels of vitamin D, better leg strength in all age groups. So here's... um, a review of seven different human clinical trials. It's in young people. These are 310 adults from seven studies. They're between the age of 21 to 32. That's from Queen Mary University in London. It's in the Journal of Science and Medicine and Sport. And they found, hey, listen, if you take a vitamin D supplement, now this was vitamin D supplements. If you take vitamin D supplements and they're potent enough and you take them for a long enough time, like six months, it increases your upper limb strength, so that would be your arms, and your lower limb strength, that would be your legs. So we're looking at young, um, active people, athletic people, and young, inactive people. And in all seven studies, a good amount of vitamin D in the blood, we'll discuss what that would be in a minute, um, led to improved strength in your in your arms and your legs. So what would be a good level? Well, the precursor that's stored in the liver, that's not yet activated. Don't forget, it has to take one extra step and go to the kidneys and be activated. The amount coming from the liver mm. is easy to check because it, it lasts in the blood for two weeks. It has a two-week half-life. And that should be at least 35. And all these studies indicate that a level of about 35 is enough for muscle strength. Now, that doesn't mean that a level of 35 is perfect for all the different attributes, benefits that come from vitamin D. Some some of the activities of vitamin D require higher levels in the blood, like a level of 50 or 55. And I think that a level of 50 to 70 is perfect, by the way, for vitamin D. But for muscle function and muscle strength, it's about 35. Then that vitamin D travels to the kidneys, and it interacts with a mineral called magnesium, and it's converted to the fully active form. So here's the NFL, the National Football League. You know, like the New York Giants, the New York Jets, the Dallas Cowboys. And uh, they looked at the, um, um, at the combine in 2015. The NFL Combine occurs in late summer, and it's the college the college athletes going to this place and meeting all these scouts and coaches, etc. And they're tested, like their running speed and their ability to catch, etc. And then 
they could be drafted based on that. So this is 214 college athletes. They were hopefuls at the combine in 2014. And they looked at the blood level of vitamin D. And they found that if you really lacked vitamin D, you had a, a higher risk of breaking a bone, a fracture of the bone, and also poorer muscle function. Over half of the uh, college athletes trying out for the National Football League, 59% uh, had inadequate vitamin D, and an additional 10% were actually deficient in vitamin D. And they found that um, when they collected the vitamin D blood level and the history of injuries were compared to that in all 214 candidates, that those with uh, a history of injuries, it was connected to lower vitamin D. Now, this is from uh, the Hospital for Special Surgery in New York that was doing this study. So here's what they said. Our study revealed that 86% of the players who missed competition because of strain injury, so hurting a, uh, a muscle, had inadequate levels of vitamin D. So they also said lower extremity muscle strain or core muscle injury was present in 50% of athletes, which was strongly associated with lower vitamin D levels. So there really is a lot of data looking at that. I mean, there's just a significant amount of data in athletes and younger people. If you lack vitamin D, you're more likely to have an injury. So there was a study done in the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, a very famous football team, won the... Uh, Super Bowl a number of times. Whenever my team, the New York Giants, plays the Steelers, I'm always nervous. Of course, if you're a Giants fan, you might be nervous if the Giants play a high school team. But that's how it is being a New York Giants fan. It's always uh, you're on the edge of your seat. Um, in any event, vitamin D levels and they linked to injury in the Pittsburgh Steelers. They looked at their blood level. 69% of the team members had low vitamin D. So they coll they collected the vitamin D levels preseason or during the training camp. And those with the lowest vitamin D levels were much more likely to get injured and they were released from the team because of an injury. So then they went to the New York Giants. This was a study going back to 2011. And once again, they looked at the, the blood level of vitamin D. I love these studies because, once again, they're not just asking people what they eat or do they take a vitamin D supplement or do they spend time in the sun. They're actually checking the blood level. So there's no fooling around here. It's straightforward evidence one way or the other. And they found that 30% um, uh, of the, of the um, uh, New York Giants football players had low levels of vitamin D, actually to the point of deficiency. So 30% were deficient, 51% were insufficient, so low but not deficient, and 17 were normal. And they found that, hey, muscle injury directly connected with the level of vitamin D. There was a strong correlation there. So it really is important for mobility, for strength, <clears throat> for preventing injuries in athletes and people who like to exercise. And it gets even more important in elderly people because elderly people need it not to fall they need it for mobility. In fact, interestingly, a study just came out this week. Uh, older people with um, benign uh, paroxysmal vertigo, um, it's, it's a common form of dizziness where if you move your head, you get dizzy. Simply giving them a vitamin D with a calcium supplement was helping get rid of their vertigo. It was reducing the number of vertigo attacks. So that's pretty cool. I, I, listen, you you can't be mobile and strong and be dizzy. <laughs> There's also evidence, by the way, that in older people, vitamin D helps reduce knee pain in, in older people with arthritic knees. So here's uh, muscle function in older adults. Now, this is the, um, the ELSA study. The ELSA study is an acronym. It's the English Longitudinal Study of Aging. And it's over 4,000 adults, older adults. It's in the journal Clinical Interventions in Aging. It's great researchers. It's from Trinity College in Dublin. If you really want to see a beautiful college campus, I mean, there's a bunch of them. Yale University up in Connecticut, Stanford University in Palo Alto, California, Brooklyn College in Brooklyn, New York. They're beautiful. Trinity College in uh, Dublin, it's like a botanical garden. They've collected plants and, and trees from all over the world. It's gorgeous. But in any event, this is Trinity College in Dublin.
And the researchers found out that muscle weakness was twice as high in older people who were deficient in vitamin D, very low levels of vitamin D. And impaired muscle function, muscle performance, was three times higher in older adults with vitamin D deficiency compared with having sufficient levels of vitamin D. Now that's, their uh, Trinity College is one of the leading research institutions on planet Earth. So here's the Journal of Gerontology Medical Sciences. It's Wake Forest University. Wake Forest University is down in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. It's the Enchianti study. The Enchianti study is in one of my favorite places on planet Earth, Chianti, Italy. And let me tell you something. If you drink a nice red wine in Chianti, Italy, it's unbelievable. It could just cost you 10 euros, you know, like $11. But if you buy the same wine here, there's something that happens to it when it travels here. It's just not as good. I drink the wine over there. It's also beautiful. So in any event, it's the Enchianti study. It's uh, almost a thousand older people. And they're much more likely to suffer poor physical performance, even develop disability, the inability to move, the inability to function, the inability to exercise, if they're low in vitamin D. So here's what they said. Our, now, once again, Wake Forest University. Our study showed a significant relationship between low vitamin D levels in older adults and poorer physical performance. They went on to say the researchers report that low levels of vitamin D were associated with a 10% lower score of physical perf physical performance and grip strength. Now that's important. 10% lower grip strength is important. Um, grip strength is a marker of health in elderly people, but it's also a marker of better aging, higher quality aging, but also survival. Older people with poorer grip strength and like a poorer gait, your gait is the way you walk, an unsure, unsteady, weak, slow gait, they don't have the same amount of time on the planet as people who are stronger typically. So here's four years later. We're back to Wake Forest University, and it's 2,100 older people. And once again, older people at low levels of vitamin D had a 30% increased risk of having problems with mobility, like, like weak muscles, back aches, arthritis, etc. It's in the Journal of Gerontology Medical Sciences. They found about a third of older adults have low vitamin D levels, and it's difficult to get enough vitamin D through diet alone, and older adults who may not spend much time outdoors may need to take a vitamin D supplement. They absolutely have to take a vitamin D supplement. I'm going to qualify that. Vitamin D is made in your skin. People with darker skin, they don't make the same amount of vitamin D. So that's one thing. And people with older skin that's getting wrinkled, etc., they don't make as much vitamin D. And people who wear sunscreen, they don't make as much vitamin D. So there's a number of reasons why you might not make enough vitamin D when you're out in the sun. And a person like me with my Irish skin, I can't sit in the sun. It really damages my skin. So I have to take a vitamin D supplement. I really think most older people really need to take a vitamin D supplement. Now, this is um, these are ultra-conservative bureaucratic health professionals. This is the European Food Safety Authority. They're, they're extremely conservative. They don't make quick decisions. In fact, it takes them a long time to make a decision. But back in 2014, they made a really, um, a really important ruling on vitamin D uh, based on its ability to, to lower the risk of falling because of muscle weakness and a problem with posture in older people. And this, this ruling has a lot of weight to it. I mean, for them to say vitamin D is important for older people to make them stronger, to reduce their risk of falling, because older people, if they fall, they hit their head or they could break their hip. Uh, and that's due to muscle weakness and a problem with your posture. That's all actually saying a lot. There's quite a few studies showing that older people, many of them were done in about 2002, 2004, 2005, 2010, uh, many older people that are low in vitamin D have a much higher risk of falling and hurting themselves. So typically most people will do okay in the summer with a thousand units of vitamin D. Pick the D3. 
D3 is cholecalciferol. Uh, it's a little better than D2 for activity. D2 is called ergocalciferol. A uh, thousand units is fine for a lot of people. Um, in the winter, you need a bit more, maybe 2,000 units a day. I need more still. It's just my genes. I need a little bit more. I need about 3,000 units of vitamin D a day to keep my vitamin D up at about 50. Because you kind of get your best ability to do well with cancer when your vitamin D is like 50, 55, 60. So I'm kind of aiming at that. So always take your vitamin D with food. It's absorbed better. Uh, you know the foods that have vitamin D in them, but there's not much. Like mushrooms can have vitamin D too. Milk and dairy products have a little bit of vitamin D, but not very much. Supplementation is a more surefire way of making sure you, you're getting vitamin D. And once again, take your vitamin D with food. You'll absorb it better because it's fatty soluble. Okay, thank you for tuning in to our podcast, the Invite Health Podcast. You could find all of our episodes all over the place. It's for free wherever you listen to podcasts. Or you could visit invitehealth.com forward slash podcast. Please subscribe please leave us a review. You could follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Invite Health. I hope to see you next time on another episode of the Invite Health Podcast. Thank you so much for listening.